Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al, week nine on DraftKings. We got a Thursday night single game showdown slate between the Green Bay Packers and the San Francisco 49ers. There's a lot to talk about on this slate because literally everybody in the game is injured or has come down with COVID-19, which has basically opened up a lot of room and a lot of salary and a lot of ways that we can kind of attack this slate. So it makes for a little bit of a different single game showdown slate in the fact that I think that you're gonna wanna even more so than normal, especially if you're building a lot of lineups, you're going to want to open up your range to be able to leave possibly more money on the table than normal because it might be optimal to leave a couple thousand dollars on the table depending on who's in and who's out. I've got Aaron Jones as the, the cover buy on this because of the fact that A.J. Dillon is probably not going to play and uh, Jamal Williams is, is not in this game either because they're both on the COVID list. So they're not going to play. And Aaron Jones may not be rushed back from his hamstring injury either. And I don't know if it's rushed back. Green Bay is notoriously conservative when it comes to their injured guys and whether or not they're going to play them or arrest them or whatever. So, like, it's going to be interesting to see if they let him run in this one. If they don't, the, the running backs that are left for Green Bay are extremely cheap and therefore going to create a situation where you can stuff in basically every player that you want uh, into your lineups, whether it's going to be at captain or in the flex. Uh, this might be a slate where you put one of those guys in your flex spot because they can theoretically have 10 to 12 points and maybe 1.5x that on DraftKings. So why don't we take a look at this and then we're going to plug things into the Fantasy Labs lineup builder the way that we always do and uh, and take a look at what we got. So first of all, I'm going to go over here to the page. I'm going to go over the Vegas page on, on Fantasy Labs. So like this game opened here, the total has come down by two and a half points because Jimmy G out and Kittle out. And the running backs out, running backs typically don't move lines or anything, but when you've got this much talent, like all pro type talent are that, that's missing from both teams, it's going to bring the scoring potential down a little bit. We still have the passing attack for, for Green Bay, and we do have a couple of cheap running backs that we can lean on here. So let's talk about that first. First of all, Devontae Adams, uh, I, I don't know what you want me to tell you. He's a stud. Find ways to play him. He is going to project probably as one of the three or four highest scoring players on this slate, if not one of the two highest scoring players on this slate. He is somebody that you're going to want to jam into captain as much as possible. And, and I'm more likely to lock button people on this showdown slate than I think any other showdown slate that I've ever played before. Usually I'll top out at, you know, I don't know, uh, 60, maybe 80% of a player in showdown because I want to leave myself room to differentiate lineups because uh, I do build 150 lineups and sometimes as many as 300 or 450 if I'm attacking extra tournaments, if they keep adding on different tournaments. You can't enter any more than 150 in any one tournament, but I can have Fantasy Labs build me 150 for the main tournament, then add on another 150 that will be different from my original 150. So I have 151 through 300 in the second tournament, then 301 through 450 in the third tournament. Uh, that allows me to spread my variance and do different things with different game scripts. So like maybe 151 through 300, I'm building uh, in case San Francisco somehow walks away with the game. Maybe Green Bay's got a terrible game plan. Maybe things kind of go sideways for them. And I've got a underdog heavy script in that game where I'm going to try and attack captains that other people aren't using. Now, you guys can do this too. You don't have to enter the big $10 or $15 tournaments that are available on these island games. You can enter the mini max tournaments or the 20 max mini max tournaments uh, as well for 10 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, and get used to mass multi entering yourself. So, like, Devontae Adams is somebody that you should be playing. Uh, every lineup that I have, Devontae Adams and Captain, always is going to have Aaron Rodgers. Whether you're hand building or whether you're using a lineup builder, you need to build in rules, whether they're in your head if you're hand building. Correlation is key when it comes to your showdown lineup. So, Devontae Adams is going to come with uh, basically preloaded for me. Any Devontae Adams Captain lineup is going to have Aaron Rodgers in it. As I said, the running back situation. We just don't know what they're going to do with Aaron Jones. And we'll find out 90 minutes before lock. We'll know if he's active or if he's not active. If he's active, I'm going to try and find ways to jam him in because he's just too cheap. If you look at the two games that he played without Jamal Williams active last year for the Packers, he basically averaged 20 touches or 20 carries a game and seven targets. They went to him constantly. He was full-time Aaron Jones all the time. Uh, and then the other 20-something games that he's played with Jamal Williams, uh, it's been a situation where he has averaged way less volume than that. He's extremely efficient with the volume that he gets, but like when you get 
A player that's as talented as Aaron Jones, plus his efficiency, all those carries inside the five. Now, instead of getting 14 carries a game, you're talking about getting 20 carries a game. Instead of getting like three or four targets a game, maybe five targets a game, you're talking about getting seven, eight, nine targets a game. The volume now pushes him way above the price that he is slated at at 9,800 on this uh, Thursday night game. So he's just not priced for somebody who is basically the guy that he is going to be if he plays on Thursday night. Now, if he does not play, there's a couple other guys that we do need to talk about because they're going to be, as you see, AJ Dillon, COVID-19, everybody else, Qs and Os and IRs and everything else. Uh, they're both $300 at captain. So they're $200 players. Uh, we got Tyler Irvin, who's essentially a wide receiver. So uh, on DraftKings, full PPR, great. They probably won't run him 15 times. You'll just get 50 pass attempts from Aaron Rodgers. But if Tyler Irvin's on the field, as much as Tyler Irvin does project to be on the field, if in addition to Dylan and Williams being out, if, this is your if-then statement, if Aaron Jones is also not active for this game, then Tyler Irvin is going to be one of the most popular players on the slate. Uh, the other player that you want to look at is Dexter. I might as well just search for him. Would make things quicker. Dexter Williams, they called him up as well from the practice squad. So like, we'll see. This is all if then statements and all wait and see stuff. So I don't have a definitive answer for you. All I know is how to direct your if thens. And the great thing about NFL versus NBA, we will know who's active and who is inactive 90 minutes before the game kicks off. And then you can adjust your lineups accordingly. Uh, and I don't know that you need to do things with the, with the captains, with either one of those running backs, but those are the two main points, but like taking a look at things real quick, I'm usually advocating against playing a 200 or a $300 player in your captain spot. But like, if you play them in there <clears throat> at 300, you have an average remaining salary in your flex of 9,900. You can literally play the best, the rest of the best players on the slate. I'm assuming that Aaron Jones is out, uh, for this situation uh you can get Tunyon you can get sorry you can get Mullins into that lineup and you still have 10-6 so you can get him into the line you can literally play every player that you want and this is what I was talking about if you if these guys are going to be active you're going to want to possibly allocate to have more money available to you to spend or to leave on the table in case Right? So, like, even if we plug Aaron Rodgers in at the captain spot, we're 3,100 over there. Fine. Don't play Tunyon. We still have Irvin. We can plug him in. We still have 3,100 that we can spend. And there's enough players down here that are going to play that we know are going to get run. You're basically playing the most expensive, second most expensive, uh, third most expensive, fourth most expensive. We can find ways. And again, with Kittle being out, you also have. Ross Dwelly, who's in the mix now, who's going to be, who, who's not terrible, right? Like, he's not anywhere close to being in the same league as, as Kittle is. That's not what we're saying, but that's not what we need. In fantasy sports, it's more important to have opportunity than talent, right? I think that Blake Jarwin is a much better tight end than is Dalton Schultz. But Dalton Schultz, when they had Dak Prescott on the Cowboys, was doing a bang-up job, even though he was primarily a blocking tight end, but did a fine job filling in in a very pass-heavy offense. So same situation. If they're going to be playing from behind, and you assume that Green Bay is going to take a lead in this game as they are favored in this game, and San Francisco is going to have to pass and has all these injured players around them, then all of a sudden, Ross Dwelly might be a guy who gets you four, five, six, maybe on the high end, seven targets. I would think he'd live more in the four to six range, uh, but that gets you what you want. So the groups that we're going to build, clearly we're going to build our Green Bay group with all the pass catchers that are left, I guess would be the right word on Green Bay. Uh, I'm going to be including two of Aaron Rodgers' pass catchers in any group that I have him as a captain. We're going to include him. We're going to include Sternberger. Um, I'm also going to include Irvin in that group. He may end up in that group, but he is such a good pass catcher that I'm probably going to include him as well. We're also going to build a bring back group with everybody that's on the other team. Uh, every offense weapon, I will also be including the captain in the Aaron Rodgers lineup where he's at captain. And I'm going to do the same thing for Nick Mullins as I build these groups too. So like, we're going to include Mullins in that. We're going to include Ayuk. 
uh, McKinnon, most there's still on IR. Samuel out. Hasty is still in play. Uh, Kendrick Bourne had a great game last weekend. Not going to include the backup quarterback. Definitely going to include Dwelly. Not going to include... Um, uh, we'll also include Taylor uh, for 400. There, there's so much value on this slate that it's ridiculous. Same thing that we always do if we have a lineup where we're including uh, a captain, Devontae Adams. And you can definitely afford him with the super cheap value guys that project to be on this slate. Uh, all those lineups that have my captain, who's a pass catcher, wide receiver, tight end, is also going to include Aaron Rodgers. The other play that I think that we needed to talk about or the other way to build lineups that I thought that we needed to talk about. Obviously, we're going to not build around kicker. Look, if a kicker wins, and there was a chance on that Tampa Bay game that a kicker could have won in captain, right? Uh, they didn't, but it's so rare that it does happen that it's something that I don't do. If a kicker captain wins that slate, I'm just not going to win that slate. That's just, I'm, I'm willing to chalk that up to that. I want to have running backs, wide receivers, mostly in my captain spot. I want to take advantage of mispriced players. I want to take advantage of players who are... Uh, not priced for their output. And like I said, if Aaron Jones plays in this game and Aaron Jones looks like he is healthy as we find out 90 minutes before lock and he's active, but not active, right? He's actually playing uh, to his full ability. He's just, they're just like, look, we're just going to let him go because he's the, the guy that we got. And we're going to ride the horse because uh, this is a game that we have to win coming off of a, a loss the previous week. Then Aaron Jones is probably my favorite captain on this slate. And we can easily afford him by putting in any of the value guys around him. And if you wanted to build an Aaron Jones lineup, I'm probably going to build a rule or would suggest you build a rule that does not include maybe the opposing team's defense, right? If Aaron Jones is having a great day, then probably San Francisco's defense is not, uh, with the exception of maybe they returned a touchdown uh, off of a pick or maybe a touchdown off of a kick return. But that's so random that like, Maybe that would be, like I said before, in lineups 301 through 450. Going over to the Fantasy Labs lineup builder, as we can uh, take a look at the optimizer. I'll go to my settings. You can save everything that you do in these templates. As you see here, I have a, a main slate template that's all set to go. We go over to DK Showdown. That's the slate that we want to build on. Hit our settings. I have a different settings for the showdowns. We go here to the templates. You can load that in. It's already preloaded here. And you can see the, the settings that I have. First of all, I don't allow kicker or defense in captain. That's number one. Uh, I will usually limit my quarterback captains to like, seven or eight percent max for either one of those i might extend that for somebody like aaron Rodgers, especially in this situation if aaron jones is out and we feel like he's going to throw it 50 plus times there is a distinct chance he could end with 30 to 35 DraftKings points on a slate like that the other groups that i build are everything that i talk to you guys about every single time on these pair the captain quarterback with at least two of his wide receiver tight end or kickers pair the captain quarterback with at least one quarterback running back wide receiver or tight end from the opponent Captain wide receiver with exactly one quarterback from the same team. Captain tight end with exactly one quarterback from the same team. And limit to at most one defense and kicker from the same game. You can build in other rules. You can build in player correlations or player groups to limit players from being in the same lineup with one another at both the flex spot or if this guy is the captain. Don't include this other uh, type of player. We'll apply those settings. And we'll set it to build however many lineups we want. Whether you wanted to build 10 or you know, 150 or 20, whatever you're looking at it to build for you, you do it. Uh, obviously, it's going to build too many captain lineups for me uh, with quarterbacks in them. So like my quarterback captain, it's got 94%. Sorry, it's got... Oh, it didn't build the 150. So let's build 20. Because there's clearly something I'm going to have to tweak in this to make it work. And it's probably I'm going to have to make it allow more salary left on the table. So... It built us this many. I can consolidate this by saying, I don't want any Kyle Use check at captain. I don't want Lazard. I don't want Tanyan. I don't want uh, MVS. I don't want McKinnon. Uh, and whittle this down so it gives me the allocations that I want. Remember, it's not as easy as going to the site and just clicking the button on build me 150 lineups and then you print money. There's a lot of work that has to go into it. Pay attention to your correlations. You're going to have to run that optimizer about 15, 20, maybe 50 different times to get it to do what you want by setting different rules to limit or boost the players and exposures that you're looking for across your lineup. So it's a tool. Use it as such and have a great time. Good luck to you on Thursday night. Bye. He's a legend.